Yellowstone volcano, what would happen if the supervolcano erupted has been revealed by USGS? Tom Fish, Express UK, reports, as we know, Yellowstone National Park houses one of the world's biggest supervolcanoes. Now the US Geological Survey reveals exactly what would happen if Yellowstone supervolcano erupted again. Now we have the comparison here of the Yellowstone super eruption that took place 2.1 million years ago compared to Toba, the smaller super eruptions as you can see, and their various other eruptions, various other sizes. And from what I can see, the life cycles of volcanoes here, the smallest one being, I can't even make it out. The uh, second yellow, orangey yellow, is Long Valley Caldera, which is a super volcano. Uh, before that is Yellowstone, 1.3 million years ago. The 2.1 is the second circle, the orange circle from the, uh, or red, whatever you want to call it, from the top right-hand side. I can't even make out what those tiny ones are. Anyway, you can see the very, the very huge size of the various Yellowstone Lava Creek, Huckleberry Ridge, Long Valley Caldera, and various other fields. So this is serious eruptions covering most of the United States, depending on which way the wind blows. Should the supervolcano underneath the Yellowstone National Park ever erupt, into a super eruption. It could mean calamity for much of the United States. The deadly ash would spew for thousands of miles across the country, destroying buildings, killing crops, affecting key infrastructure. Fortunately, the chance of this occurring is very low from what the geologists are saying now. Yellowstone has a super volcano, making it thousands of times more powerful than a normal sized volcano. And the supervolcano has had, as we see, three truly super enormous eruptions in its long history. 2.1 million years ago, 1.3 million years ago, 664,000 years ago. I thought this was 630,000 years ago. But anyway, we did have a 130,000 years ago and a smaller one 70,000 years ago. And from what they've been saying in various announcements, we've had 80 eruptions since the 70,000 years ago. They, they were smaller, and they said that every 6,000 years or so, we do have an eruption from Yellowstone, which is major, but not a super eruption. There is little indication another super eruption is due anytime soon. Let's make that clear. It's even possible Yellowstone might never have an eruption on a similar scale of a super eruption again. USGS researchers calculate how much an enormous eruption would affect nearby regions in the short term, meaning years to decades. Statements on the USGS site read, parts of the surrounding states of Montana, Idaho, and Wyoming that are closest to Yellowstone would be affected by pyroclastic flows, the P flows as we know them, while other places in the United States would be impacted by the falling ash. Such eruptions usually form calderas broad volcanic depressions created as the ground surface collapses as a result of withdrawal of partly molten rock, the magma below. And it's fortunate that chances of this sort of eruption at Yellowstone happening are exceedingly small in the next few thousand years from what the geologists are telling us. What is a Yellowstone supervolcano? Yellowstone's National Park, as we know, sits on top of a reservoir of hot magma, which is five miles deep. It's fed by a huge plume of molten rock welling from the hundreds of miles below. This heat fuels Yellowstone's geysers and hot springs. And as the magma rises up into the chamber and cools, the ground above Yellowstone occasionally rises and falls. It deforms, inflates and deflates, as we say. On rare occasions throughout history, the supervolcano's magma chamber erupted. The overwhelming majority of the eruptions in Yellowstone 
have been smaller lava flows, with the last occurring at Pitchstone Plateau about 70,000 years ago. The reason why Yellowstone receives so much media attention is the slim possibility of apocalyptic super eruptions. Such a super eruption is anything that measures magnitude 8 or more on the volcanic explosivity index, in which at least 240 cubic miles, that's 1,000 cubic kilometers of material, gets blown up, ejected, enough to bury the city of Texas five feet deep. Now, as we can see, the image of the super eruptions and how much magma was erupted, starting from left all the way down to right. Toba, 74,000 years ago, 2,800 square kilometers. Yellowstone Huckleberry Ridge, 2.1 million years ago, ejected 2,450 square kilometers. Then Yellowstone again, Lava Creek, 640,000 years ago, ejected 1,000 square kilometers. Long Valley Caldera, 760,000 years ago, ejected 580,000 square kilometers. Yellowstone, 1.3 million years ago, at Mesa Falls, ejected 280 square kilometers. Nova Rupta of 1912 eruption, ejected 13 square kilometers. Pinatumbo, 1991, ejected 5 square kilometers. Mount St. Helens of 1980, ejected 0 0.25 square kilometers. That's about a quarter square kilometer. Wilson Butte, Inyo Crater, California. That's where we're having our Ridgecrest earthquakes now. In your craters, California, ejected 0.05 square, uh, 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 square kilometers, not square, cub, uh, cubic kilometers. Lassen Peak, California of 1915, ejected 0 0.006 cubic kilometers. I was making a mistake. I was saying square kilometers. I'm sorry. All these were in cubic kilometers, uh, three-dimensional, that is. So, on rare occasions, the supervolcano's magma chamber erupted. Overwhelming majority of those eruptions have been smaller lava flows. The one at Pitchstone Plateau 70,000 years ago, for example, and the ones since then, another 80 eruptions since then, were smaller lava flows. And uh, from what they say, it's overdue for a small one. Okay, so smaller lava flows. That's the situation. I'll leave links below for you for this. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece in Capota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.